One MetLife Stadium Drive, one of the two NFL stadiums shared by two teams. But we're not here to talk about that or that team across the hall. Keith Ippolito and John Rad are only here to talk about the true football giants. We talk Giants football and wherever else the conversation may take us. So deal with it. This is the Shared Stadium Podcast. Hello and welcome to the brand new The Shared Stadium Podcast. This is a podcast where we're going to talk about everything New York Giants. Now I get it. It's a shared stadium. I understand. Y'all understand the play on words, but let's just be honest. I don't care about that green team down the hall. Yeah. I'm I'm John Rad, (laughs) my partner in crime, Keith Ippolito. Keith, what's happening, brother? Not much, brother. How you doing, man? I'm excited to get this thing going. Yeah, I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this. Look, two two diehard Giants fans. We are not in the uh, tri-state area, so if you come looking for us, be prepared to travel, but we're not telling where you are, where you are, where we are right now. Um, yeah, yeah. Maybe one day. Yeah, one day. <laughs> Depends on how much we upset <laughs> you guys throughout this podcast. <laughs> um, we're going to talk all things Giants. We're going to talk Danny Dimes. We're going to talk you know, reactions right now as we're recording this, we're coming up on a uh, on draft time. We're coming up on the draft. Uh, eight, eight days, right? Yeah, about eight days away. And you know what? Let's just go ahead and kick it off right there. Where you know, Baldy he came out with the top five QBs. I don't know how you feel. We're gonna start there. Let's go ahead and just lay the groundwork right here, right now, Keith. I'm not a Danny Dimes fan. Uh. I have man, I have mixed feelings on him. So, I I have I have moments where I love the kid, and then I see things where I'm just absolutely scratching my head. Like so, I you know he had the one season where the interceptions were you know out of out of this world. It's what and he then did it best. seemed like it's yeah, what he did best. Hun- yeah, hun- hundred percent. And then it seemed like, you know, Dable came in and he kind of calmed him down a little bit. And uh, I have another thought on this as well as like, if I'm really evaluating the situation, honestly, has the guy really had an offensive line to play around his entire career? So I'm not, I'm not saying he's uh, totally innocent, but I feel like I can't put the entirety of the blame on him. How do you feel about that? I can't put the entirety of the blame on him, but I also have not seen moments of scenarios where, yes, he doesn't have an offensive line, but I haven't seen those moments of solid decision-making from him. Because that's the big thing that you can evaluate him on, where whether you have an offensive line or not, and and I'm not comparing him, but I got to make the comparison to Patrick Mahomes. If you look at Patrick Mm -hmm. Mahomes and we'll take away the magic and what he does with the football, it's the decision-making for me that makes Patrick Mahomes special. It's the decision-making even for quarterbacks that I won't even take it to the level of Patrick Mahomes, but I'll take it to a scenario of a Josh Allen of, of, I mean, okay, I'll even go a little bit further. Jalen hurts, you know, it's the decision making yeah, part that I, I like Jalen Hurts as as painful as that is for a Giant fan to say. <laughs> and we're we're going to talk about him and his green franchise here shortly. Um, and we're not bitter. <laughs> we're, we're we're not salty. But I, I can evaluate him on the decision making, and that's what I haven't seen. And I give credit. You know, the two smartest people on your football team should be your center and your quarterback. And you got a Duke guy. You were hope you you think you got. You know, the smartest guy on, possibly in the draft. He had a Peyton Manning's, you know, basically QB coach from back in the day. So you mm-hmm. thought that was what you were getting. But I felt like the draft pick number one was a reach. You went too far with that. And then number two, to re, to re, to give him the re up, you went too far with that. And those aren't his faults. I won't hold that against him. But I have mm-hmm. to look at the decision-making ability of him. They haven't been there because he's had wide receivers. And I'm not saying studs, but he's had some quality wide receivers around him that definitely could have helped him yeah, out. Yeah, he's more. had some serviceable wide receivers. I, 
I would I wouldn't say we don't have a bona fide star on our team, but uh, you know he's not walking around with chumps. So I'll give you that. You've had Darren Waller. I mean, that we've had. Him. Yeah, yeah. You've had a safety well, yeah. valve that, and that's only been two years. I get it, but you've had a safety valve that you've had there, and that's not what we've had with him. But as the draft is coming up, as I've looked down this draft, as I've looked up and down this draft. I don't feel like the Giants need to use that first pick on a quarterback. I don't feel like that's the Mm -hmm. best place. I don't feel like that's the best value. I think this is going to be a offensive heavy draft. I think we're going to see a lot of, and and if one day we're going to take this whole thing, for those of you listening, thank you for listening. Follow us on, you know, wherever you get your podcast, like subscribe, follow. Uh, We'll give you our Twitter handles at the end. We'll put the information down below, but, um, if you ever see me, you'll understand. Former offensive lineman, uh, I'm a big guy. I think this is going to be a draft where we're going to see more linemen come off the board than we've seen in a long time. And to be perfectly honest with you, I don't think the Giants need that. I think they've made some quality upgrades at the offensive line place. I go back to what we said. We have Daniel Jones. I think we're going to need a wide receiver. I think we're going to put enough around him at this point in time to for his inadequacies. We got to give him something of comfort. So, and I know everybody. Yeah, he, go ahead. Yeah, he needs a playmaker. Yeah, he needs that guy that. And, and what I would like to, to see, um, the person I know, I don't think he'll be there though, is uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. That's. Oh yeah, yeah. I I, I think he'll be gone I, by the time we draft, but that's what I, I'd like to yeah, see. Yeah, I, I yeah I I I would I would love him too. I I I would be uh, surprised if he was still there. I I also like I like neighbors from LSU too. Mm-hmm. I think he's a bona fide star ma- uh, stud. I I'm a, I would be happy if we took either one of those two at six. I I would be totally happy with you. I, would you be cool with going with neighbors? No, I like neighbors as well. Um, but once again, I don't think that I don't think he'll be available either. Um, mm-hmm. w- here's what I don't want, and I like the kid. I just think you can get them in this. I think we'll be able to get, you know, some of the quarterbacks that would be available, like a JJ McCarthy. I think mm-hmm. he'll be available in the second round. Um, I'm oh, trying to, yeah. uh, I'm trying to think of the. Um, well, they just had, um, uh, they just had uh, the kid from South Carolina, Rattler, Spencer McCarthy, Rattler. and uh, yeah, Spencer Rattler. And uh, I think Bo Nix was in. They had them uh, visit uh, as well. And they're going to have them in. I mean, we have to face, face facts on something. I think the New York Giants realized, particularly with the injury, Daniel Jones isn't it. But also mm-hmm. at the same time, it's not like you're drafting Jordan Love to sit behind Aaron Rodgers. It's not no, like you're drafting yeah. Aaron Rodgers to sit behind Brett Favre. And, and that's no. the comparison that I'm making that, you know, you're not exactly sitting there with a stud quarterback that you're going to draft somebody. We're still working on an undetermined piece of piece of clay and wondering what he is. And then you're going to go draft somebody. That's not the best idea. Draft another quarterback. Um, but another one I like, Malik Neighbors out of LSU. Yeah, yeah, tell. he's on. Wait, or sorry, I didn't mean to cut no, no, you off. What, what were you gonna say? He, here's what we know about LSU wide receivers. We we had one. We loved him. Wide wide receiver, you yeah. baby. <laughs> we we loved him, and we haven't had one of those <laughs> since him. And, and that and um, <laughs> we let him get away. And he was injury prone. I'm not taking anything yeah, yeah. away from him. Odell Beckham uh-huh. Jr. To those of y'all who hadn't figured it out. ODB, uh, we loved him. What he, the way he progressed. So I think Malachi, I think Malachi, Malik Neighbors. That's what I mean, Malik Neighbors. I think he's another yeah. wide receiver that I think he'll be available. I think he'll he'll he's that leaner, faster one, that playmaker that can add mm-hmm. and stretch the field a little bit more and can yeah. create some space that would give Daniel Jones the ability to get rid of the ball faster. Absolutely. And I, I, I mean, I, you know, I don't watch every LSU game, but you know, some of the games I have seen, and you know, 
people that I respect on Twitter um, who, you know, have watched, you know, uh, the tape of like a, a Daniels or whatever. Uh, you know, it really wasn't until this season, until, you know, the quarterback that he had such a fantastic year. How much is that attributed to having a just an absolute stud of a wide receiver as neighbors? I mean, it's almost like you just throw the ball up and get, and he's and he got it, man. No, you don't. Do you agree or no? No, hundred percent agree. I mean, take look at what, and this is not to take away from him. Look at what Russell Wilson did when that Legion of Boom run. Look at those wide mm-hmm. receivers that he had. Now, I caveat this, and we're going to talk about this here in a second. He also had a stud running back in Marshawn Lynch. He, he yes. had somebody to take and he did some magical things in terms of his decision making ability, which for some odd reason, they went away from Russell Wilson. And but I will say if they could have gotten and I know they wouldn't have been able to, but if they couldn't have gotten a deal on Russell Wilson, I would have been OK with Russell Wilson coming to the Giants for a year, two years and then drafting a quarterback and move. Because yeah. look at what uh, Pittsburgh Pittsburgh has basically yeah. done that. Yeah. He, he's a veteran. You know that. You know he's not the Russell Wilson from when he first came in the league. But you know, I I I respect him enough that I think he would be a good veteran presence in the locker room to have for a year or two, and whoever we brought in to show him how to be a good pro. On top of that, he's not a bad locker room guy from everything that I've heard. I mean, I know uh, Richard Sherman wasn't, wasn't a fan of him. Some of his former Mm -hmm. teammates on the defensive side of the ball on the defensive side of the ball. were not a fan Mm -hmm. of him, but on the offensive side of the ball, everybody loved him. He seemed to have gotten along with everyone. And I think with a team like the giants right now, you need someone that's not just a locker room leader, but, a glue that can be a part of that locker room too. Uh, I I agree. I mean, um, you know, I and you know, until probably until Dave's, you know, got here. I, that's honestly, that's probably one of the biggest things that that locker room has been missing is just a leader. So yeah, no, I would be, t- I would have been totally on board bringing Wilson in to to go that route. Um. Yeah, uh, you know, I think uh, we've done enough. I think we did a pretty solid job upgrading the defense. So I, I'd love. I mean, obviously, don't get me wrong. Looking at some of the names that are in, you know, on the defensive side of the ball. Um, yeah. uh, what's his name? Latui, Latu. Oh I, yeah, out yeah. Of UCLA, yeah. the edge rusher, is a solid uh-huh. option. Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, who's the, uh, the other, the Robinson kid? Yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Um, even, uh, ba ba ba. Why am I drawing a blank? Quentin Mitchell. Yeah. The cornerback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yep. So I think there's some, I think there's some options out there on defense, but I think we've addressed so much, particularly on the defensive line. I think there's enough yeah, there. I, I, yeah. I, I mean, uh, you know, honestly, I mean, if I'm being honest, I mean, you know, you've got Fibs, you brought they brought in Brian Burns, mm-hmm. and you got Dexter Lawrence, and I'm a big fan of Bobby Okereke in the linebacker role. So, um, you know, it, if there was anything on the defensive side of the ball, I think it would be more, uh, you know. DB or you know because uh, Z- uh Xavier McKinney I think that's a big loss he you know he had to go get a he had to go get paid rightfully so I'm not sure. knocking him for him but I mean I'm I, I'm I do think that is going to be is or is a big loss for the team I'm happy he got paid but I would have loved to have him on that on this team still and who was um oh why am I trying to blink who's the guy that they got out of Carolina Oh, um, Burns, Brian Burns, Burns. Yes, Burns. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I once again, and well, for those of you guys listening, you'll hear us jump all over the place. I don't know what in the world Carolina's doing down there. That is a franchise that, I, and I yeah. know it sounds like a lifetime ago. You got to just think it was just what eight years ago that they were in the Super Bowl. 
Yeah, yeah, eight <laughs> years ago, Ed, playing the Patriots, which is was I mean, no, no, kinda, Broncos. I mean, Broncos. Or Broncos. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. It was yep, just eight yeah. years that, and you had yep. star quarterback Cam Newton. You had you and to where just last year you had the first overall pick. Big difference. Yep. Um. All right. So look, yeah. let's go ahead and you and I. We haven't talked about this. You know. Once again, you're listening to the Shared uh, Shared Stadium podcast. John Rad, Keith Ippolito. Keith and I, we've been buddies for quite a few years, but we haven't talked about this yet. He's gone. I'm happy. Let me caveat this. And I'll say it. Saquon Barkley, he's gone. Mm -hmm. I'm happy he's gone because he was a good guy. He's a good running back. Everything about him is this good guy. But everybody's upset. Are you upset that the Giants let him go? Or are you upset that the Giants let him go and he went to Philly? Uh, so n- I, no, I'm not upset that the Giants let him go. I, I actually think that Shane and them, uh, I think they offered him a pretty fair contract. It was like twelve and a half million dollars. I, um, like you know, in everything you just said, I love Saquon. He's a fantastic guy. He's a great locker room guy. He's a phenomenal competitor. Um, here's the here's the issue though is is that he he's injury prone. Yep. And to give that and to give that type of money to a someone who has that risk, it's hard for me to justify that. And I I think him going to the Eagles was probably. You know, all right, you know, because he, Saquon, he views him as that Christian McCaffrey level, in my opinion. And uh, he, um, this isn't, I don't want to sound like I'm bashing him because I'm not, because he's an incredible talent. But if I'm being really honest, I mean, he's not Christian McCaffrey, right? (laughs) No, he's not. (laughs) Look, I mean, I think for the situation, he went to the best possible place for him. And here's what I mean by yes. that. Taking the money out of it. The Eagles didn't run the ball a lot. Like, he's not going there no. to be the stud running back. So hopefully that lessens his load on the – and once again, I know this is a New York Giants podcast. But two things can be synonymous. I can be a fan of a player even though they play for a team I don't like. Those two things can totally yeah. – Exists. I've been a fan of Jason Kelsey since he got to the Eagles. I liked him every all year long, except twice a year, and that's when he played the Giants. Um, well, it's say, hard not hard hard not to like, and I'd love to have a drink with that man. Oh my! <laughs> I don't think he'll stop at one. <laughs> I I no. I don't think he'll no, stop I at one. Care. I think he'll be like, yeah, sure, we'll keep going. But I think Saquon went to the best possible place for him, and that's a kudos to him and his agent because. He has now gone to a place where he do- he's not going to be the bell cow. In New York, he had to be mm-hmm. the bell cow because that he had to be the safety valve. But now with all they have there, with all those wide receivers they have there, with Jalen Hurts running around, I'm happy the Giants mm-hmm. upgraded the defensive line because we need to deal with that and shut that down because our biggest yeah. threat right now in the NFC East is them. I'm not worried. I'm not as worried about it. Granted, I know we lost them. I'm not as worried about the Cowboys as I used to be until I see who. The, no, the, I, I'm not. I mean, granted, you know, we always have a hard time beating them for whatever reason, but no, I'm, I'm terrified of the Eagles still. I, you know, I, the Cowboys are going to do what the Cowboys do. They, they just seem to beat us, <laughs> you know, and kill us, but they lose to everybody else. I don't. I'm not even sure what that team's going to look like in a year. Jerry Jones isn't happy yeah. with Dak Prescott. I, I'm not nope. sure what that team's going to look like in a year. And well, hell, there's even been the rumors flying <laughs> around about Dak Prescott ending up in a Giants uniform one day. And I am not mad. Wait, hold on. <laughs> I'm not that mad. <laughs> <I had> <laughs> <clears throat> I had to think about that a little bit. I, I like, once again, another player that I like, not a locker room cancer. I think there mm-hmm. was a lot put on Dak Prescott, and I think it was unfair because 
once again, I told you guys we'll go all over the place. I think Dak yeah. Prescott, there were things off the field that he had to deal with more than other Cowboys quarterbacks yeah. had to deal with. Troy Aikman yeah, didn't yeah. have to didn't have to worry about his money the way that Dak did. And Dak has a better record. Not Troy, I'm sorry. Um what's the other one after Troy Aikman in between there? The oh, guy, um yeah. God, why am I drawing Romo. a blank on him? Because Romo, Romo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Romo yeah. didn't have to go after his money the way that Dak had to go after his money. Dak has proven mm-hmm. way more that he's a better quarterback than Tony Romo, and he had to, and Jerry held off paying him. And I don't understand that. I don't get that part. So, but that's neither here nor there. I would, I would be yeah. okay with seeing Dak Prescott in a Giants uniform, but I want it to be like, if not next year, the if year after. I, I would. I- yeah, I would I would be okay with it too, but I I it would have to be it wouldn't have to it couldn't be like a crazy like maybe a two year deal or yep. something you know we pay you pay you big money up front or you know the one year or whatever and but kind of like a prove it deal basically. Uh, but right now, what I want to see, I mean, look, we've paid Daniel Jones. Yeah. We're not going to win in the way the NFL is structured now to win. And and what I mean by that is we saw it with Patrick Mahomes. We saw it with Russell Wilson. We we Mm -hmm. saw it where if you can get your if your quarterback can come out, because at the quarterback position, there's a lot more pressure. There's a lot more stress on them than in any other league, in any other position. You got to come out and you got to show and prove in a year because we need to win by year three. And win a Super Bowl by year four, so we can re up you to give you those other that other year. Yeah, and that and we've proven like now we've already done Daniel Jones. We aren't just one play away from him. Not happening. Dak Prescott. It would need to be like you said a two year deal, and all the stars line up because I'm not worried about Washington. Uh, no, hey, I mean hell, they can't. Like I'm sure you read that they they invited all four of these quarterbacks to their camp. Like, what the hell are they doing there? They invited me to their quarterback camp. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> they yeah, and they invited me to play left tackle too. And so I, I don't I don't know I don't care. That's a them problem. Um, you know, here, here's what I care about is let's get the quarterback situation figured out. But also on top of all of that, um, I always butcher his last name, Kafka, Mike Kafka. Oh yeah, my yeah, Mike Kafka. Yep, yep. What the hell? What, what does he do? I mean, he's been promoted. He's the new assistant head coach. Yeah, he's an yeah. offensive coordinator. So yeah, I, no, yeah. I'm I'm right. I'm curious to see who is calling the plays this year. And um, you know, I actually I was so I was listening to a, a podcast uh, earlier today or yesterday. Uh, I get I'll give them a plug because I love listening to their podcast, the Giant Insider Podcast. Okay, and um. I heard uh, um, uh, the point. This point brought up, and I thought it was kind of a good point. It was all right. So uh, Dable's first year, first year head coach. You bring in Kafka, and you know he's calling the plays or whatever. And you're you know you're trying to figure out the ropes. Uh, your first year as a head coach, so you know you just want to. You know, get a fig a handle on that. Year two, Dable's feeling comfortable. Maybe he wants a little bit more of an active role in the offense and calling plays or whatever. And um, some articles I've read or whatever and heard on the pod is that you know Kafka's been itching for a head coaching job, so maybe giving him this title is a solid to open up some other doors for him. Do you agree with that? Oh, hundred percent. Uh, look what he's done. And, you know, he was the quarterback coach when Patrick Mahomes won the Super Bowl. So you know that he has that and to the point of what I just I just spoke of. He has that where he knows how to take a young quarterback, get them ready, get them ready Mm -hmm. to win. So when you look around the NFL right now in the landscape of, you know, let's just say. Two years, who could be looking Mm -hmm. for a new head coach? You know, uh, um, I'll, I'll throw out one right away, an easy one, Pittsburgh. Yeah. Mike Tomlinson is yeah. getting up what? there in years. He's ready to retire. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, not to get off, to- like we always do, but 
I these Steelers fans that call for him his head just absolutely Who? blows my mind. Tom, uh, I, I, you haven't heard, you haven't heard Steeler fans call for him to be fired. I don't understand that at all. Blow, that blows is, my damn mind. That is the dumb. And Steelers fans, if y'all want to comment, comment. They'll comment down. Yeah. I don't care. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard of. Look what he number one. It, you get the honor of saying in the length. What the franchise has been around? What a hundred years? However long, yeah, they've had four yeah. head coaches. Four, yeah, yeah exactly. Four. And if I'm not mistaken, all four of them have gone to the to the Hall of Fame. If I'm not mistaken, so and, and uh, I, yeah, and, and I could be wrong on that. I don't know, but all of them have produced. You haven't, and to that point, and this is what, to be fair. No, I won't be fair about that because we've had some bad coaches for a stretch there. Um, um, Ben McAdoo. <laughs> I, yeah, Ben McAdoo. Well, I he, he was terrible, but uh, his Pat, ego Pat got Shermer. I think I think Pat Shermer was b- worse than Ben McAdoo. Do I? I I knew McAdoo was not the guy when he decided to bench Eli. And not let him get the record yeah. for uh, most starts. Yeah, because you let your ego get in the that, way. Yeah, that's that's uh, y- y- you know, know your fan base, brother. I mean, Jesus, you know your fan base. <laughs> no, like to steal a phrase from the Dwayne the Rock Johnson. That was a moment of know your role and shut your mouth. The man, pretty much, the man much. got us two super two Super Bowl championships. Mm-hmm. What he did, say whatever you want. He wasn't, oh, he wasn't Peyton. He wasn't Tom Brady. Who, who, who? He has something that that thirty other quarterbacks or well, twenty eight other quarterbacks in the yeah. NFL didn't have two Super Bowl championships. So boo, who, who? Exactly. And then here you come along and, and you decide and that, I'm gonna bench you. Yeah. Well, not not to mention is is you know. I personally think w- him playing in those in that Green Bay game and he, and the 49ers game, the beatings he took in those games and how well he played. Holy Ooh. god, man. I mean, I I yeah, I, I mean, Eli is uh he, put it this way, he's going to be forever a giant and Pat Shermer is uh I, I don't even know where the hell Pat Shermer is these days actually. I I, I plead ignorance on that. Can we give credit though? And, and I don't think this is. I don't feel like he gets enough credit. Can we give credit to mm-hmm. Archie Manning? Remember, Eli oh, yeah. Manning was supposed to go to the San Diego Chargers, and he said he no. Was, he was. He was indeed. <laughs> and Archie Manning said, "No, we won't play." And he was supposed nope. to be a San Diego Charger, and that's when the trade day happened, and it was Eli Manning for. And look at the bullet that we dodged. It was for Ryan Leaf. No disrespect to Ryan Leaf. I've yep. met him. I'm glad well, you got your life turned yeah. around. But that was for Ryan was Leaf. Super nice guy. Super but, nice guy. <laughs> but yeah, look at the bullet that we dodged there. Imagine, imagine yeah. where our franchise would be had Eli had Archie told Eli, "Yeah, you can go to San Diego." We end up with Ryan Leaf, and uh, yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I, I'm not. Qu- I don't want to imagine that. That's a. Yeah. That's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> Think about that. Just let that soak in. So for everybody who who hate, hated Eli, just go back and, and let the butterfly effect happen and rethink about that. But, I know. It, it actually, it, it is kind of bizarre to think about that. Yeah. I, it's sad. I, I mean, I once again, looking at Ryan Leaf, I saw him and I was like, man. Because Ryan Leaf was supposed to be, he was built to be the quarterback of the future. You're talking what six four, oh, yeah. six five, two seventy, yep. and could run. Oh, the man yeah. was supposed to be the quarterback. Oh. Had an arm on him, but he had his own demons mm-hmm. to deal with, and I'm glad he got his life together and good for him. But you know, yep. but we still haven't answered the question. What does Mike? And I get it. It's a solid nod to give him a a, a go ahead. But I also feel like the stupid thing, and, and this is the tricky part, Dable could have just written his own uh, exit ticket. If you already know my yeah. franchise, you already know the players, you already know the system, 
ownership likes you, you know the stadium, you know the people. You let's not say this year, but next year you draft a quarterback. We like our quarterback. Everything about Dable, you gotta go. I already got my next guy right here, and he's already grooming me a quarterback, and he's already calling the plays, and he's already got the offense together. You could have just written yeah. your own your own resume ticket and your own exit ticket and thank you for your service. Yeah, I mean that is that is always a possibility. I mean, I you know, uh, it, it's de- it's definitely I ne- I didn't quite think about it that way. That's a, that's a good take. I mean, it's to- it's totally feasible. I mean, like you said, I mean, a guy c- comes in, he knows the offense, especially if he gets the, if we get the quarterback, whether it's this year or the following year in a draft. Um, yeah, I I mean it it. it Total, it absolutely could happen. Um, would, um, would you be, would you be okay this season if uh, Dable was calling the plays, or would you prefer to have Kafka continue to call the plays? What's your thoughts on that? Uh, I go. I still want Kafka to continue to call the plays. Kafka has shown what his I, because he's a quarterbacks coach. He mm-hmm. understands how to call plays to the strengths of Daniel Jones. And because yeah. Daniel Jones, let's just call it like it is. I'm I'm going to steal a page from, um, uh, uh, I think I heard Cam Newton say it on a, a podcast. Uh, since we're shouting out everybody's podcast here, which I don't mind. I'm cool with that. Club Shay Shay. Shannon Sharp's podcast. <laughs> uh, Daniel Jones doesn't look like he got that dog in him. And what I mean by that is Cam Newton, Ben Roethlisberger, uh, uh, mm-hmm. Matt Ryan even showed it at, with oh, the Atlanta yeah. Falcons where they mm-hmm. commanded that offense. And the only time yep. they didn't command it for Matt Ryan was in the Super Bowl 28-3. <laughs> but um, – <laughs> I, I don't think we can throw that on him, though. At least I'm and, not. And that's what I mean. <laughs> that's exactly what I mean. Even Russell Wilson doesn't have that dog in him. He has a championship, but he doesn't have that dog yeah. in him because he should have two. If he had that dog in him, with two, he'd have two Super Bowl rings, and he would have been able to say, mm-hmm. no, I am not throwing this ball on the goal line. I'm about to give this to the biggest, best running back right now and Marshawn Lynch, and we're exactly. going to bulldoze this in. He don't have that dog in. But when I look at what and what and exactly when I look at quarterbacks and I say, you know, that's why I say I know a lot of people even probably tilt their head. Matt Ryan, I don't remember what game it was that they were playing, and Matt Ryan was just going up to the line and turned and looked at his wide receiver. Hey, line the F up. Oh, that's yeah, I know dog. actually remember I remember that. I remember that. I remember that game. I don't remember who they were playing, but he looked up and I, it, which is 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 just so funny because me and you both working at our uh, previous employer. Not that we're you know we can call Matt Ryan and you know stri- but y- you know we had regular interactions with the man mm-hmm. and he was one of the friendliest and nicest persons I had ever come in contact in this industry. And for him to have, for Matt Ryan, the the nice, you know, I'm not gonna call him meek, but mild, mild mannered. He mild was, mannered, yeah, a mild mannered, nice, yeah. mild mannered guy to turn and look down the line. Obviously, we know Tom Brady has that dog in him because we don't seen him celebrate like that. Daniel Jones doesn't seem like he has that dog in him just yet, and that's why I say Kafka would still make the play calls because he knows how to play to his strengths, and I think there's something to be said mm-hmm. about that. And, and, you know, who do you want back there? You want Dable making calls again, or you want Kafka sticking with it? No, I, uh, you know, not to, you know, play the agree game, uh, but I, no, I I do 100% agree with you. I would prefer to have Kafka continue to call the plays because there's a continuity. There's a continuity. You know, you know he knows he knows how to you know call the play scheme towards Jones and you know and if we get a if we get a really a stud wide receiver in there, whether it's Harrison or Neighbors. I I really do think that this offense could be I think it could be pretty impressive. I honestly going into this season, 
I had pretty high expectations. So, and then just, I mean, obviously the you know the first game of the season, the Dallas, I was you know the writing on the wall or whatever. So I I was really disappointed going in or disappointed in last because I did have high expect high expectations for this team, and they just totally regressed. Um, but you know they righted the ship and. Uh, you know, one thing I will, and which is why I don't call for Dables or Shane's head, uh, at all, because the team did not quit on the man. I, I mean, in fact, winning those three or four games or whatever it was under Tommy Cutlets ended up costing us pot- potentially, uh, a higher draft pick. <laughs> no, I agree with you. I mean, if you think about the NFC in its totality. If mm-hmm. you take a look at that, and and I got pulled it up here real quick, and let's we'll go through real quick. Arizona Cardinals dumpster fire, Seahawks dumpster fire, L.A. Rams they were very hit or miss. Forty ers we know who they are. Uh, that that I'm mm-hmm. not saying that they're bad by no stretch of the word. Carolina Panther dumpster yeah, yeah. fire, Atlanta Falcons they just mm-hmm. never they couldn't get out of their own way. The New Orleans Saints, eh, yep. okay. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, yeah. you let. What's his name? Johnny Manziel beat you, or who? Did, not Manziel. Who am I thinking of? The other uh, uh, from uh, Oklahoma. Uh, him. That's yeah, what I mean. Uh, from the Browns. Yeah. Uh. Geez. Why am I? Yeah. Why am I? This is gonna drive me. Drive <laughs> me him, crazy. Him, Baker and I, Mayfield, Mayfield. Mayfield. Baker. Yes. Baker Mayfield. And nothing against Baker Mayfield. I like. I think he. Once again, I told you guys we'll go all over the place. I think he got a bad rap. Um, and I think he turned his rep around and I just think the, I think the hole was dug too far for him to dig himself out of it, but I'll continue on the Chicago bears dumps the fire, Minnesota Vikings dumps the yeah. fire, green Bay Packers and the, uh, Detroit lions. I think shockers. Me up, man. Up, man. Yeah, yeah. Those were shockers. Yeah, I, I, I was not expecting that, uh, you know, not that I expected love to be bad, but man, wow. Better and, than I expected. 100%. And just to even further confirmation of that model on how to approach quarterbacks, which I wish more teams would do, is have bring in your player if you think it's the guy and have him sit behind a Hall of Famer like Aaron Rodgers or if it's Aaron Rodgers going back to Brett Favre. I, they've done it two times in a row now, and... I, I mean, I I think it's still early on love, but based off of the what we've seen at, in one year, it's looking pretty damn good. The the model, and that's why the draft is set up the way it's set up, and where you pick them up those four years, the team gets that fifth year option. It gives you that flexibility, and that's you're one hundred percent right. But it's like I said earlier, every team is looking for the Patrick Mahomes that is going to yeah. come out year one, year two. And mm-hmm. you're not going to see that. Cause on top of all of that, not only is everybody, excuse me, trying to win a championship in the first two years of a draft pick, they're trying to get that. No. Revenue. Well, I, I mean, I, I, hell even, even Mahomes sat for what? Two year, at least two. Or, 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 was it three? Behind, uh, uh, Alex, uh, two. Was it Alex Smith or was it Castle? I thought it was Alex Smith. It might have been Alex. I thought yeah. it was. Once again, a rabbit hole. But, <laughs> and, <Yeah>. you know. <laughs> we go down a, rod- a lot of those lot of as those. the uh, listeners will figure that out. will figure that out over time. <laughs> but, you know, and then you finish up just the NFC East. The Commanders, Dumpster Fire, Giants, they were, I mean, they were their own Dumpster Fire because at one point in time, they got the guy who delivered Domino's Pizza to uh Start at quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> and, hey, shout, shout out to a uh, friend and uh, colleague, Brian Murph, go Commanders. No, we are not <laughs> shouting them out. Absolutely not. No, I don't wish them any I lo- success. I lo- lo- love you, Murph. I, I do, except during football season. No, I got no love for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and then Giants, and then obviously the Eagles and the Cowboys, we know what they did. So there was a lot of opportunity there. Um, to just turn some things around, and this year just it was not a it, 
the stars weren't in our favor. Let's just face it. With the whole quarterback situation, that was a, a big part yeah. of it. The the stars, the odds were not forever in our favor. Um, so it'll be fun to take a look to see what we come up with, to see what happens. Um, you know, we we've been talking about how we were eight, nine days away, ten days away from the draft. Yeah. Are you watching the draft? Yeah, no, I'll I'll definitely watch, especially the first day. It, you know, outside of you know probably the first day of the season or whatever. I mean, it's it, it's one of the one of my favorite days. It's definitely I'll definitely make a point to be watching it. I, I wouldn't even be surprised if I ended up out at a sports bar or somewhere watching it with a group of guys or whatever, and and you know. Just you know, because we were such a bad team, it, you know, it's not like we'll be waiting till pick thirty-two or whatever to know what we're doing. So, uh, no, I'll definitely be out, uh, be watching it. What do you got planned for the draft? I don't think I'm watching it, and the reason I don't no? think why, I, why not? Number one, and, and I heard from um, and, and I'm not going to name, you know, I'm not going to spend the whole time name dropping. We joke about that, but from what I've read and what I've heard, uh huh. No one's going. It's gonna be like twelve really? or twelve or fifteen guys there. Everybody else is staying at home. Yeah, so I mean that's number that the players don't even care about it. Number two, yeah, and you know, I know some. I know people are going to get on to me about this, and that's fine. I don't care. But the concept of the way that they editorialize and the way the pundits talk about situations for these players that have nothing to do with nothing. It doesn't deal. It does. Oh, yeah. It's not what they don't talk. About, oh, and here's this guy. He was adopted. His mom was a crackhead. His dad was shot in a <laughs> shootout. His sister, she has 19 baby daddies, but he's a stud wide receiver out of Oklahoma. I'm like, what? What does all of that have to do with what he did? <laughs> Hundred percent right. I mean, <laughs> I I'm I'm with like all the uh, all the uh, all the filler stuff yeah. in between the actual. Pick. I I'm with I don't I don't really give a crap about any of that. I, if it was up to me, they would just I don't know show highlights or whatever. Like what I don't really care, but just di- just get the pick. Uh, that's all I that's all I really care about. I I can I don't need all the. You know everything you just went through. It, yeah, that that's it's pointless. It's just filler. It's filler material. Here's here's what I tell you what to do. If, if you want to capture me, <clears throat> excuse me, go and find. Okay, so let me see if I can find. I want to just find the draft over here. Uh, I had it up. I'll pull Let's it. See here, we'll pull it. I got it right here. So I'm gonna pull it. Up. Yeah, I got Schrader's. I'm pulling up here. Okay, so let's just make this plain and simple, and we'll we'll have some fun with this. So with the first pick with the Chicago Bears, Bears, number one, first and foremost, you don't get the full clock. You know who you're picking. No, if yeah, on if you haven't figured out your pick by then, then, uh, you know, maybe you shouldn't be a general manager. Exactly. <laughs> you got 45 seconds to, to get that pick in. First pick. Boom. Okay. Second pick. Yeah. The Washington Commanders. Go and find, I don't know who, who is Joe, Joe Theismann still if with they're us? Not taking, if they're not taking a quarterback, uh, I, I, then they need to have their head examined. No, no. I'm talking about the filler. The filler. I'm gonna help you out with the filler here. Oh, the filler. Want, oh, yeah. You want to keep oh, me entertained? Oh, um, go and find a former Washington Commander. I don't know who you want to get. Um, yeah. and a, a retired one is, is Joe Theismann still with us? John Riggins. Go get one of those guys. John Riggins. Let any of them. Yeah. Let him talk. Okay. They get their pick in. Cool. Great. The New England Patriots. Can you get Tom Brady? Can you get Tom Brady? Yeah, Plain and simple. I, Let's not even sit here and sugarcoat this. Uh, New York Giants. He likes to talk anyway. Tiki Barber, what are you doing? You already have opinions all the time. Tiki Barber, you talk. Oh, Tiki's got a lot of opinions. <laughs> exactly. You get Tiki Barber. Let him let him give it. L.A. Chargers. Ladanian Tomlinson. Uh, yeah, LT. Arizona Cardinals. 
Um. Oh, what's the wide receiver? Uh, Fitz, uh, Fitz, uh, Patrick? Uh, Fitz, Larry Fitzgerald. 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 Yep. There you go. You're Fitzgerald. You can talk for us. Tennessee yeah. Titans. Um, if he's available and he can do it and there's no restraints, get Eddie George. Eddie George. Atlanta Falcons. Or what about uh, what about a throw what about a throwback to Frank Whitechat with the uh the the Music City Miracle. You remember that play? Um Sorry, Keith? this is how my brain works sometimes. Keith? <laughs> I think he just passed away, yeah. bro. <laughs> so if you can get him <laughs> Just, yeah. Yes, that, I think he passed away. Um, all right, with the eighth pick, <laughs> uh, this okay. If y'all haven't figured out by now, we're in Atlanta, so I'm just we, I'm giving it away. Yeah. We live in Atlanta. Don't come looking for us. We don't care. Yeah. Um, with the eighth pick, go get Brian Finner. Shout out to you, B Fin. B Fin. <laughs> uh, okay. Indianapolis Colts, go get Peyton Manning. Truth be told, I think this one just would be fun, just because it would be fun. With the tenth pick, go get Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> go get an yeah. You can play. have a, uh, yeah, and they could play the uh, uh, the uh, the president's uh, uh, theme song or the or I don't is, does the vice president have a theme song? I don't know. I should probably know that. Yeah, we probably should, but no. I'll even give you the back to back. Okay, go back. The Colts have the ninth pick. The Jets have the tenth pick. Um. You go get Pat McAfee and Aaron Rodgers to do the because they are he's already always on Pat McAfee show. You go get those two goofballs, oh, yeah. put them together, and yeah. but you see what I'm doing here. You go and you yeah. save all of that. I don't need the pompous circumstance because, like I said, whoever the producer is, whoever the editor is, you know, and, and with the twelfth pick, uh, the Minnesota Vikings seem to be looking at you know so and so Jones out of uh, nope. Memphis, and uh, you know. Yeah. He he had a drug yeah. addiction problem. He was a crack baby, I read here. Yeah, so, a crack baby, John. <laughs> oh, so that's why I'm not watching it. But man, okay. So I I mean, no, I I def I I definitely agree with you on that. I mean, I I if if it. I look at it more as like a like a social event. It's an it's a reason for me to go out with some friends and have a drink or whatever. That's I mean, cool. yeah. If, if honestly we're being honest, like uh, you know, it's nothing that I can't just go look on Twitter and see. All right, so uh, the Giants drafted Marvin Harrison or Neighbors or whatever. All right, cool. I, you know, I'll go. Maybe I'll go watch another uh, YouTube highlight reel of him or read something about him, and I'm that's it. I'm good. I don't need to know anything else. And that's exactly why I'm not. I'll, I'll follow it on Twitter. I'll watch something else. Um, obviously, what I don't know what day. Today's Wednesday. So, you know, we'll try to do this weekly, keep you guys updated on everything that is yeah. going on with the Giants. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe we can do uh, another uh, either a – a pre-draft or a uh, post-draft pod, maybe. We'll, we'll go post. One of the two. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll go yeah, post. I think the post draft, post-draft would be better. Because at least that way, if the Giants do something crazy and end up going to draft a quarterback out of Fort Valley State University, no disrespect to Fort Valley State, <laughs> um, <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> go do something, you know, just... Maybe, maybe they'll draft a kicker or a punter in the first round. And, Who the hell knows? Exactly. And so with that, that's why I, I, I don't. We don't. We're going to do a post draft. Um, but look, that wraps it up for us today. Catch us every week. You can follow us on. It's not Twitter anymore. It's X, but it'll always be Twitter. Follow oh, us on Twitter, sorry. Keith. Where you at on Twitter? Uh, I am at uh, KSHIP86. And you can find me at JohnRad450. You can follow us all, wherever you get your podcast. Like, subscribe, follow. Leave us a comment. Tell us your thoughts. And do the most important thing. Tell a friend. And here's the truth of the matter. If you don't like us, bite us. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs> Later.